What's up sports fans, my name is Jake and welcome back to Game Day Eats. We're back to the swing of things this week, but calling another Audible just to switch things up. We're having an away game in another kitchen and sharing this week's dish, which is chicken and waffles. I figured that was the one to go all out on because they're insanely easy to make, share, and equally delicious. I'm making these because it is a staple to the Los Angeles breakfast and brunch culture, and the Rams are hosting the Kansas City Chiefs this week, so you're gonna to wanna to have an amazing spread to go with the show that's gonna unfold in this game. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share to help spread this food goodness, and as always, sit back and relax. This is Game Day Eats. This dish has two main ingredients with some additions to put over the top, but we're focusing on the foundation of it all, the waffles. The chicken we're gonna get from a local grocery store because we're sticking to our fundamental idea of only making one of the main ingredients. Here's the recipe. Two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, three tablespoons of sugar, a half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, two large eggs, separated, a half cup of vegetable oil, two cups of milk, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. We've made fried chicken before with the Atlanta episode, which should be popping up now if you wanna see the breakdown of how that's made. And for these tenders, like I said, I went to my local grocery store and we bought two pounds of these cluckers. I distinctly remember the first chicken and waffles I ever had because I remember looking at the menu and thinking about how mixing a lunch and breakfast item really solidified the validity of brunch to me. Before that, I figured it was just a term for people who woke up at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday and didn't want to appear to be social degenerates. And now I was one of those, so I really appreciated any help I could get. But even to me, I thought it was over the top. You think about it. Champagne and orange juice and then chicken and waffles. Whoever's mixing and matching, please keep it up. A case could be made that this dish could represent any metropolitan area that hosts brunch specials, but I chose Los Angeles based on the fact that the city made the culture popular with the reality shows based there, and for some reason, I associate the Rams with that culture more than the Chargers. Don't ask me why. There are multiple different ways to dress the waffle, but this is to show off your cooking skills, not to be on the cover of a magazine. Our waffles are fluffy, chicken is already pre-made, syrup is on top, got our beers poured. It's time for a taste. And of course we need it with chicken. The homemade waffles just makes the whole thing, but now it's time for some beer. Since we have two this week, we're actually gonna start with the Dunkin' Porter. It's not really a specific taste to it, but I mean, it's alcoholic. And onto a brand that we've already had on the show, which was back in Buffalo. It is our seasonal southern tier that tastes like a cinnamon roll. It's very sweet. Time to talk football. The Kansas City Chiefs are the visiting team this week and have been one of the hottest teams in the NFL this season. This offense has been setting records and I would have never guessed at the beginning of the season that an Andy Reid-led offense would be in that conversation. It seems that he just didn't trust Alex Smith enough with the same plays that he has let Patrick Mahomes run free with. Now speaking of Mahomes, what a sensation he has been. This is what the Falcons wanted when they drafted Michael Vick in 2001 and what the Panthers wanted when Cam Newton was drafted in 2011. A mobile passing quarterback who makes smart decisions. We saw the early stages of this when Reed had Vick during his Eagles tenure between 2009 and 2013. Vick had his best seasons as a passer under Reed, posting career best completions, passing attempts, completion percentage, touchdowns, yards, and yards per attempt. Literally every stat that matters as a quarterback. 
Not to mention, he also had the most rushing touchdowns of his career the same year he had the most passing touchdowns. Insane. Andy Reid is truly the quarterback whisperer and Patrick Mahomes is developing into a top five quarterback in the league with Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Drew Brees. Not to mention the fact that Kareem Hunt is able to take pressure off of Mahomes because he is a threat in and of himself. I can see the Chiefs contending for championships if they're able to get their defense in order. While the offense is fun to watch and get the points thrown up, the best offenses don't win championships. Defenses do, and they need to get some stars on that side of the ball quick. The Los Angeles Rams play host this week, and it turns out that they don't need their passports after all. The game this week was supposed to take place in Mexico City's Estudio Azteca, or Aztec Stadium, but that was relocated back to Los Angeles after the NFL decided that this field was not playable. The stadium itself has been busy hosting 23 soccer matches, three concerts, and their president-elect's final campaign rally since the new hybrid grass was laid in the stadium in the middle of July. But all of those things seem to have done all of that work. The NFL itself has been pushing foreign games for almost a decade now, and that has left the home fans of those teams feeling duped because the league has taken away one of their home games for the year. And that's a discussion for another time. But the Rams have been equally as fantastic as the Chiefs have been this season. Jared Goff has also been elevating himself with head coach Sean McVay. Looking at Goff's performance under Jeff Fisher, the coach that drafted him number one overall in the 2016 draft, it was a disaster. So much that Goff won most improved player of the year in 2017. And the fact that a player improved so much under a coach that he wins an award should tell you how bad the previous coach underutilized him. The Rams have heavily invested in winning now with the major off-season and in-season moves with the additions on both sides of the ball. And normally I add these to the side panel over here, but there are too much, so let's go over them. Akeem Talib, Naduqam Sung, Brandon Cooks, Marcus Peters, Sam Shields, and Dante Fowler Jr. Not to mention the defensive coordinator that created one of the modern day defensive masterpieces with the 2015 Denver Broncos defense and won a Super Bowl by shutting down Cam Newton's powerhouse offense that year. Needless to say, but I'm saying it anyway, this team is stacked. They are the first team in the NFL to clinch a playoff spot and they also clinched their division in week 10. They haven't even had their bye week yet, which is in week 12. I'm six and four in my predictions this season and had a wonderful bye week last week, which you can see here. And this is by far the hardest choice to make. On one hand, you have the explosive Chiefs who have been blasting through all of their opponents with some close games sprinkled in. Then you have the Rams who have had more close games than they really have won in this season. Five out of 10 have ended within a touchdown or less. They really wanna know how to rattle their fans' cages. That said, I'm taking the most complete team with the Los Angeles Rams taking a win over the Kansas City Chiefs by a score of 35 to 31. And we'll see if that score holds up because that's just me being conservative. Week 11 is over after this powerhouse matchup, and next week we have the Tennessee Titans getting another visiting spot when they take on the Houston Texans, and I take on breakfast tacos. As you can tell, I just love breakfast food. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the field. Here, try this. <laughs> nope, nope. Jim LaHoop here, standing there for Jake LaHoop. He makes it look easy, especially when he tastes the beer all the time. Game day eats. Take one. Here we go. Fluffy yet flavorful. Highly recommend. Come back. Game day eats. This is where you want to be. This is where the action is.